All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh, Baal Shem Shai. And once again, it's another video. And it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baal Shem Shai, Baal Shem Kodash. All praises and glory is definitely due, especially in the times we're in. So this video that I'm about to do will be uh, an extension of the last video that I did. There's a couple of scriptures I want to bring out concerning the wicked elite. And when I say the wicked elite, I'm talking about the top banking families that are ruling this planet earth in wickedness right now, which happens to be so-called white people, the Edomites, okay? The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, you know, the usual suspects, the top wicked elite, the hidden elite, which most people don't know about. OK, um, they're the ones that's ruling behind the scenes and, you know, they get their power from the Heavenly Father on the left hand side. OK, I'm going to play a little bit of this video to uh, bring you up to speed in this video I'm about to do. But they get their power, the wicked elite that control this world in wickedness. They get their power from the Heavenly Father, which his name is Yahweh. Right which means he is, all right? He is, he is good, but he is also evil, okay? He creates both sides. He created Satan. Wrap your head around that. You know, you got a lot of these wacky-tacky Christians, they'll tell you that Satan is battling the Heavenly Father because they don't understand the prophecy where it speaks about, in, uh, uh, they don't understand the prophecy in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, where it speaks about Lucifer. They don't understand that, that Lucifer is really talking about the so-called white man the light bearer, as in the wicked Illuminati, and they don't understand the prophecy in Revelation, where it speaks about uh, the war in heaven. They don't understand that. So they foolishly think that Satan is battling the Heavenly Father, and that's not the truth. The truth is the Heavenly Father created Satan for the Heavenly Father's purpose, for his own purpose, all right? When he wants to stir up evil on the planet Earth, he uses Satan and the angels that work with Satan, okay? And when he wants to stir up righteousness on the planet Earth, he uses the uh, righteous side, you know, Yahweh Shai and the angels that work with Yahweh Shai, you know? That's how, that's how it goes down. And the Heavenly Father is the controller of both, all right? And if you watch my last video, you would have heard the scriptures that I brought out, like Isaiah 45 and 7, where the Heavenly Father said through the prophet Isaiah, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So you can't get around that scripture. So if you're still clinging on to that tired, uh, <laughs> that tired, uh, uh, wacky, tacky Christian ideology of the Heavenly Father's battling Satan and anything that's wicked, Satan did it, and anything that's righteous, God did it, then you don't understand these scriptures. And you, you certainly don't understand the Heavenly Father. You don't understand the Godhead, which the Godhead is the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, and the angels, okay? So, without further ado, let me play the first part of this video to catch you up to speed. Then I'm going to go into a couple of scriptures showing you once again that the wicked elite, all right, doesn't matter what so-called God they worship, you know, they worship uh, Baphomet, let me just throw a few, few names at you. Uh, the wicked elite, they worship Baphomet. Google that. You know, the, the demon Baphomet. Um, they worship these other demons, right? Molech. As a matter of fact, you have something called the Bohemian Grove. You can Google that. The central figure at the Bohemian Grove is this 40-foot, 40, 40 45-foot stone owl that's known as Molech. And you got the top elite of this world, at least some of them, during the last two weeks in July... You know, they, they go to this hidden retreat, and, and you don't really hear about that in the news, but it's it's being done every year, right? Every year, the last two weeks in, in the month of July, they go to this hidden hidden retreat called the Bohemian Grove, and they bow down before this 40-foot, 40 45-foot stone owl known as Molech, the demon Molech, okay? This is why we read in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, Matter of fact, let's get that. But the point I'm making is all these so-called demon gods, they don't have their own power. They all get their power 
from the big boss himself, which is the Heavenly Father, which his name is Yahweh, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai now is in charge. Yahweh Shai made a statement. He said, all power is given unto me by my father. Okay, and that's what the majority of these people don't know. Okay, so this is why I'm doing this video, you know. But let me show you what we're wrestling against. The Bible is clear on this. The Bible says we are wrestling against, well, let's read it. The book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, right? And I'll start the 10th verse. It says, finally, my brethren, is this is directed to us that are in this knowledge and this truth that understand these scriptures, right? And the reason why we understand these scriptures is because that's a gift given to us from the heavenly father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, to understand these scriptures, mainly to do the work of the Lord, to go out there and teach them. Okay, that's why he gave us the understanding of these scriptures. So for us to go out there and teach them and to help gather the elect. Because as it stands right now, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, is only gathering the elect of the nation of Israel by the word and the understanding of the word. This is really only for the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay, and there's plenty of scriptures that prove that. Anyway, Ephesians 6 and 10, my, uh, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we're, that's the mentality we're supposed to have, right? When we're dealing with this, this stupid world, <laughs> right? We got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And this world is incredibly stupid. The people of this world is, is, is incredibly stupid. The society is incredibly stupid. This so-called white man is incredibly stupid. All right? So we have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, right? Reading on, it says, put on the whole arm of the Heavenly Father that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, I direct your attention to the word wiles. It means trickery. Look it up. Like feminine wiles. You know, a woman will use her, her trickery and slickery to get a man. Well, there you go. It says, put on the whole armor of the Heavenly Father. What's the armor of the Heavenly Father? <clears throat> the understanding of this Bible, these scriptures. It's like an armor. It protects you. That ye may be able, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And in these scriptures, it reveals the trickery and slickery of the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, particularly the top banking families and all the wickedness that they do. The scriptures speak about them. You, you know, they go under many names, the Illuminati, Secret um, Council on Foreign Relations, you name it. All their slickery and trickery is in the scriptures. All right? <laughs> it's in the scriptures. So by knowing and understanding these scriptures, dealing with the Illuminati, secret societies, you are leg up on them. You're able to put on the armor that you can deal with their, their, their wickedness. Okay? As a matter of fact, you know what scripture comes to mind? 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Let's read that. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Remember, it is written, wisdom and knowledge shall be, our, shall be the stability of our times. This is what keeps us stable, right? In the mind, when everybody else is losing their mind, we understand what's going on. So when we see these false flag attacks, we understand that's in the scriptures. Okay, when we see uh, the wickedness that Esau is doing with these uh, GMO foods and all that, how they, they you know, their uh, population reduction, we understand that it's all in the scriptures. All of that wickedness is in the scriptures. That's why it says, put on the whole arm of the heavenly father that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. See? So again, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, it says, least Satan should get, now who's, who's the Satan? Again, the, the, these are the Edomites, beginning with the top banking families. They play the role of Satan. They get their power from Satan. We're going to see that back in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Now, where does Satan get his power from? He gets his power from the heavenly father. You see, it's like a chain of command here. Okay. He gets, Satan gets his power from the heavenly father, the one you call God on the left hand side. This is why you might hear us say every now and again, left hand energy. Now you understand that left hand energy. You have the right hand energy. Yahweh Shai sits at the right hand side of the father. Satan sits at his left. This is called balance, people. And if you watch my last video, I spoke about balance. The scriptures speak about balance. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Clearly, that's written. So you have to understand these things. And you have to come out 
of that stupid mentality of the wacky tacky Christian. They don't understand what's going on. Okay? Anyway, let's get back to the scriptures, man. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, it says, Least Satan should get an advantage of us, like he does on the wacky tacky Christian, because they don't have this knowledge, they don't have this truth. Right? <laughs> Least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Yeah, like his... Do you know the Bible speaks about secret societies? Do we not have secret societies right now? Of course we do. I just mentioned one to you. Uh, the Bohemian Grove, okay? The people that attend that are not just ordinary people. These are people that are heavily juiced in in secret societies, different secret societies, right? All of that is in the scriptures, people. It's all in the Bible, okay? You just got to know where to go and get it, all right? So we are not ignorant of his devices. So we're able to put on the whole armor. Now the scripture should make more sense to you. Ephesians 6 and 11, put on the whole arm of the Heavenly Father that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right? Things just don't happen, all right? Oh, this was a coincidence. No, no, no. Everything is planned. All right? It's all planned out. And the plans really start with the Heavenly Father. Nothing happens by coincidence. All right? Yahweh Shai even made a statement. He said, a sparrow don't fall to the ground unless the Heavenly Father sanctions it. Now, that's a sparrow. A small little bird, but it can't die unless the Heavenly Father sanctions its death. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture where it says, the issues of death come from the Heavenly Father. So anybody that's killed in a brutal fashion, whatever, in any kind of fashion, the Heavenly Father sanctioned their death. The Heavenly Father controls everything. That's why he has the name Yahweh. Yahweh means he is, meaning he is everything. So anyone who doesn't believe in God, you, 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 you already... You already failed, okay? <laughs> As in, hey, well, wait a minute. I got a scripture for you. You don't believe in God, right? I don't believe in God, okay. But funny enough, though, the same person who say they don't believe in God, when they're about to die, they're, they're free, oh, my God. Wait, I, I thought you didn't believe in God. Anyway, Psalm, here's your scripture. Psalm 14 and 1, it says, The fool have said in his heart, meaning his mind, there is no God. I don't believe in God. So you're a fool. OK, you can't look around this planet Earth and see the, how intricately the planet Earth was created and not believe that they had to have a high intelligence to create all this intricacy that we see. The, 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 the human body itself, how intricate the human body is, you, you, you can't see the intricacy of the human body and not believe that they have to be a God. They have to be a higher consciousness that created this. OK. Anyway, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, all right? They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. So anyone who says they, does, they, they don't believe in God, well, you're dealing with a corrupt person. You're dealing with an abominable person, all right? Back to Ephesians 6 and 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now, when you look at that word principalities, it literally means demons, a hierarchy of demons. And I gave you some examples that the wicked elite of Esau, that they worship. The demon Baphomet, the demon Molech, the different kind of demons. But here's the truth that even a lot of them don't know. All these so-called demons and the power that they have, right, really comes from the Heavenly Father. See? All these demons that the wicked elite of Esau worship, that they commit human sacrifice for. As a matter of fact, you go back to the Bohemian Grove, there's a, there's a, a ritual call, and you can Google this, a ritual called the cremation of care, where supposedly an effigy is sacrificed. Look, within that effigy, there's a real human person, there's real human energy, and it's being sacrificed to get what? To get more power from the demon god Molech. That's what it's all about. That's why in the past you had kingdoms that committed human sacrifice to get more power from the gods. But the thing is, all these so-called gods, really, it's the heavenly Father. <laughs> See, this is what we. This is why we know, us Israelites, we know that there's only one God. Okay, there is only one God. You see, uh, in the book of Psalm 96 and 5, it talks about the other nations. They believe in many gods. But we, as Israelites, know there's only one true God. 
It is right here. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, as in us Israelites, the Lord our God is one Lord. There's only one God. There's even a scripture where, to quote it, it says, where the Heavenly Father went looking for other gods and he found none. So he is the God. All right. He said uh, something like, I know not any. Let me see if I can find it. That's going to be a little difficult, but hopefully I can find it. I know not any. Uh, okay. Hey, hey, this might be it. This might be it. The book of Isaiah 44 and 8. All right. Let's read that. Isaiah 4, which once again proves my point. All these so-called demon gods that the elites of Esau worship, and I gave you a few names, they all get their power from the God, the one true God, which his name is Yahweh. And this is what the wicked elite is not doing. They're not giving their credit of all the wickedness they're able to do, the power that they have to do wickedness. They're not giving the credit to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. And, that, and the Heavenly Father Yahweh is pissed. All right, because remember, as it is written, the Heavenly Father Yahweh is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. So when you don't give him his due, when you don't, when you don't give him, even on the left-hand side, even on the wicked side, when you're not giving him his just due, he gets mad, man. So that's one of the reasons why you Edomites, beginning with your top wicked elite, where you're going to be brought down. Because you ain't, you ain't giving the Heavenly Father credit. You know, inside joke. You're not giving him credit. Isaiah 44 and eight. Now check this out. <laughs> now this is going to prove it. This is the scripture. Isaiah 44 and eight. This is the heavenly father speaking through the prophet Isaiah, right? He said, fear ye not, neither be ye, neither be afraid, right? It's, it's, it's really, when you come into this knowledge, this truth, there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear, man. There's a scripture where it says, perfect love casteth out fear. So when you have perfect love, man, of, of, of the understanding of these scriptures, Right. And of course, you love the true brotherhood. There's very little to fear, if any. OK, this is why he said, fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, this is the Heavenly Father speaking, and have declared it to who? Through the prophets. Isaiah was one of them. You are my witnesses or you, ye are even my witnesses. Right. The, the prophets, the apostles, and the teachers of Israel, the elect, if you will. We are the witnesses. Now, that word witness, I, I talked about that word uh, at the, the camp Saturday. That word means to know. Witnesses means to know. Wit means to know. Okay? You know. All right? That's why you're a witness. Ye are even my witnesses. Now, here's the point. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. <laughs> Let me read that. Let me read that one more time again, man. Is there a God beside me? So all these so-called demon gods, Molech, Baphomet, look, all that power comes from the Heavenly Father. It's an illusion that there's these other gods with power. It's an illusion that even the Heavenly Father himself created. But see, the, again, the wicked elite did not give their credit to the Heavenly Father himself. And he speaks about that. Heavenly Father speaks about that in, in you know, in the book of, um, in the book of Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah, what was that? Isaiah, I did it, I, I put the scripture in my last video. Okay, I, I think it was um, uh, Isaiah the, uh, uh, I got a brain fart right now. Isaiah the, um, it might have been Isaiah the 10th chapter. Okay. But let me finish read the scripture. Uh, you are my, you are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? So here's the point. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. So he is the God. This is why when we read back in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hail Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. See, so there's only one God. And the mediator is Yahweh Shai, the mediator between us and the Heavenly Father. Now, the scripture I was trying that I had a brain fart on, it might be Isaiah, Isaiah 10, where the Lord said, uh, was it Isaiah 10? Yeah, Isaiah 10 chapter. This is the one I read in the last video, okay? Because the wicked elite is boasting 
and they're not given the, the credit that they have to be able to create wickedness on the planet. That's their power. You know, remember, let's go back to Esau. What was the blessing Esau received from his father Isaac? The blessing of the sword. Okay, the blessing of the sword, which means destruction. So that's Esau's power to destroy, right? Beginning with the top wicked elite. That's what they do. They destroy. Now, again, and we brought the scripture out of the camp, a uh, scripture that backs up the blessing that Esau received, which was the sword, is, and that's funny because it's in Rebel 8, uh, I'm sorry, in the book of Genesis, right? Genesis, the 27th chapter. Now you go all the way to the book of Revelation. So you go from the first book of the Bible to the last book of the Bible. And here we read in Revelation 6 chapter, which backs up the blessing that Esau received. All right. Revelation, the sixth chapter and the third verse. Now check this out. And we brought this out at the camp Saturday. All right. Revelation, the sixth chapter and the third verse. This is a vision that the apostle John saw in the island of Patmos. He saw a red horse. Let's read it. Uh, Revelation six and three. And when he had opened the second seal, which is basically a vision, right? Opened the understanding of the vision, what, what the apostle John was seeing in that vision, right? I heard the second beast say, the second beast say, come and see. And that was an angel. Come and look at this vision here that I'm about to show you, right? And there went out another horse that was red. Now, when the apostle John saw the vision, he actually did see a red horse, but that was symbolic. The horse represents power. The red horse represents Esau, Esau in his power, Esau in his blessing, which is the sword. All right, which is the sword, because what when Esau was born, he came out what red. OK, Esau from the Hebrew word Ashashua, which means he wasted what was wasted on him, his pigment. That's why the blood showed forth through his skin, giving him his color red Esau, the Edomites. All right. The Edomites are in their power. All right. And, I, and there went out. That's what the vision was all about, that the Apostle John was seeing. OK which is recorded in the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him. By who? Wait a minute. I thought, <laughs> I thought Esau had his own power. Who gave him his power? That's the question. Who gave the top wicked elite their power to destroy? Who gave them that power? The heavenly father did on the left hand side to fulfill his purpose. And it goes back to what, Elder High Priest Yaquab used to always say, whenever he taught, that was his favorite saying, he always said, we had to learn wickedness in order to appreciate righteousness. So the Heavenly Father raised up the Edomites to show us wickedness, so in order we could appreciate righteousness. And it makes complete sense. All right. Even the serpent said that. And I'm pretty sure that's where Elder Yaquab got that from. He got that from the serpent in the book of Genesis that told Eve, after Eve took on the knowledge of wickedness, the serpent told Eve, if you know both sides, as in good and evil, then you will be proper gods. And the serpent didn't lie when he said that. The, the part where the serpent lied was when he said, we shall not die. No, when you take on the knowledge of wickedness, you die. All right. Even the apostle Paul said that when you commit sin, which is the knowledge of wickedness, transgression of the law, eventually it brings forth death. This is why we die, people. We die because, because we were created to live forever. But when we take on the knowledge of wickedness, eventually we will die. Okay? So that's why when we're made perfect, under the new covenant, we cannot die. Under the new covenant, you cannot die. You're an immortal. You cannot die. So you got these crazy Israelites out there talking about, we're, we're the ministers of the new covenant. Shut up. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Under the new covenant. When you're under the new covenant, 100%, you cannot die. You're an immortal. And you certainly don't fear death because you can't die. But that's another video for another time. Revelation 6 and 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Who, who, who the hell is that? Who are the ones that's taking peace from the earth right now? Huh? Who's the ones that's always involved in some kind of skirmish, some kind of war? It was Mayim Shobao, right? Let's go back to the Rothschilds, right? Mayim Shobao made a statement years ago. He said, you always want to buy when blood is running in the streets because they make their most money, even to this very day, the Rothschilds, they make their most money 
on bloodshed, on war, on destruction. That's where they make their most money. All right. So they're the ones controlling this red horse. They're the ones that's sitting on that red horse. All right. This is what this prophecy means. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth as it. How do you take peace from the earth? By creating war. By creating war. Who are the people that create these wars out here? That's right, the so-called white people, beginning with the top banking families. That's how they make their most money. That's their cash cow, war, okay? So it says, to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And that's what usually happens in wars, all right? And silently, the top wicked elite that hate the populace, they hate the populace, man. They hate especially our people. They hate people in general, but especially our people, right? Um, they're the ones that's creating all this destruction out here, and this destruction is killing people. The GMO foods that they, they created is killing people, right? And the straight-up wars that they create is killing people. The uh, different false flag attacks that they finance, that they create, that they engineer, is killing people, okay? So they've been given that power by the Heavenly Father. And let's not forget, they have a population reduction agenda. Years ago, you had that uh, uh, the plaque called the Georgia Guidestones. You can Google this. You know, recently it's been taken down. But for, for since, what, the early 80s, it was standing in a monument in Georgia. Hence the title, Georgia Guidestones. And it was a series of commandments, their commandments, Esau's commandments, Right? And I believe it was 10 of them, if I'm not mistaken. And the first one was maintain humanity under 500 million. So what does that mean? Presently, there's almost 8 billion people on the planet Earth. So according to them, 7.5 billion people got to die, got to be killed. Population reduction agenda. Google it. All right. So again, that's the red horse at work. The red horse. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him by who? By the Heavenly Father. This proves that the wicked elite, the power they have to destroy is controlled by the Heavenly Father. It's given by the Heavenly Father. But they don't give credit to the Heavenly Father. And that's why the Heavenly Father eventually is going to take them down. Okay? Uh, and there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him by the Heavenly Father a great sword. Now, sometimes when you read sword in the Bible, it means destruction. All right? It means destruction. See? So, again, the Heavenly Father is taking them down. One of the reasons is he's taking them down is because they have not given credit to the Heavenly Father. Let's read it. Isaiah 10 and 13. And, again, you can watch my last video. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch my last video. I go into this. Isaiah 10 and 13. And he saith, this is the wicked elite. That's their thinking, right? Beginning with the top banking families. By the strength of my hand, I have done it. See, they're boasting. And by my wisdom, for I am prudent. <laughs> but just how prudent are they? The, the, the prudence came from who? Not them. It came from the Heavenly Father. You see, they did they did they, they have not given credit to the Heavenly Father. And to this very day, they're not going to give credit to the Heavenly Father. Giving credit to the Heavenly Father means praising the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right? Praising the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. That, that's what it means, give credit to, to the Heavenly Father. When I say give credit, that's what I mean. They're not, you're not going to hear the wicked elite praise the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, for giving them the power of wickedness. Because that's where they got the, their power from. They got it from the Heavenly Father. Okay, they got their power from the Heavenly Father, and his name is Yahweh, which means he is. All right, for he said, by the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have robbed the bounds of the people. Google the history of the Rothschilds, how they got in power. By thievery, man, right? by robbing the people in very cunning, creative ways. All right, Google their history. For I am prudent. And have, I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures. And have, that's the whole deal with the Federal Reserve. Google that, that history there. 
why it was created, to rip off the people, have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. So again, this is the top wicked elite boasting of how they have power over the people and wickedness, but they never gave the credit to the Heavenly Father. See? And the Heavenly Father is speaking about that in Isaiah the 10th chapter. For he saith, by the strength of my hand I have done it. They're not saying by the strength of the Heavenly Father, right? I have done this. No. They, they, look, the scripture says it. For he saith, by the strength of my hand I have done it. So that's one of the reasons why the Heavenly Father is going to bring them down. And then when you jump down to the 15th verse, it gives you a great analogy. Shall the axe boast itself against him that you have there with? Who's more powerful? The, the guy swinging the axe or the axe? The guy that's swinging the axe is more powerful than the axe itself. The axe can't just jump up and cut down a tree. You have to have a, 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 a human being with human energy to grab the axe and use it to cut the tree. Okay? The axe is powerful, but without the, the, the lumber man or without the... Uh, uh, lumberjack, without the lumberjack, the axe is not powerful, okay? The axe is not powerful without the lumberjack. You have to have someone to swing it. So guess what? The top wicked elite, they're the axe, but the heavenly father that controls them is more powerful than them. That's the point, okay? Uh, so now I'm going to wrap this video up by bringing the last scripture, the, one, the scripture that I really wanted to bring out. Uh, Psalm that I didn't bring out in the last video, Psalm the 17th chapter. Okay, you're going to see that the top wicked elite, the Heavenly Father actually controls them. All right. Um, Psalm 17 and 13, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, meaning bring him down from his agenda, which is what? The New World Order, which is where they want everyone chipped. You know the deal. They want everyone uh, identified by an electronic chip. That is the crown and glory of the New World Order. And if you don't believe there's a New World Order coming, we're number one, we're already in it. Number two, it's on the back of your dollar bill with the pyramid with the all-seeing eye with the Latin words, Novus Ordus Chlorium. That's what the, the top wicked elite want to bring. They want to bring a New World Order. It says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. So that's our prayer. Deliver my soul from the wicked, that's Esau, Edom, the Edomites, Malachi 1 and 4, which is thy sword. See? So the Heavenly Father is using them. He's using them. And, and you know, the wicked elite, the Heavenly Father is going to use them to punish a lot of our people. Because our people are totally wicked. All right? So the Heavenly Father is going to use the wicked elite of Esau to punish a lot of our people. All right? That's why King David said that they are the sword of the Lord on the left-hand side. Left-hand energy. Let's read it again. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. See? So the Heavenly Father controls them. From men which are thy hand, O Lord. Yeah, the left hand. Certainly not the right hand. Yahweh Shai is the right hand. We read the scriptures, it tells us Yahweh Shai sits on the right hand of the Father. So the question is, who sits on the left? Well, there you go, Satan. And who could, who, who, uh, Satan, um, uh, who do the Edomites get their power from? Satan. All right. You go back to Ephesians. We wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Right? Uh, as a matter of fact, let's quickly go back to Ephesians because I, I didn't finish read that. Uh, Ephesians 6. Right? Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, which I already explained that. That's the hierarchy of demons against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Again, who is that? Your top wicked elite. Against the, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There you go. This is why these, these individuals meet up at a, at a secret retreat called Bohemian Grove and the different secret spots around the world that they meet up to do their wickedness. It tells you that in the book of Micah. Micah the, uh, let's read that real quick. Micah 2 and 2 gives you another insight. Micah 2 and 2, which says, uh, well, Micah 2 and 1, what's the subhead and say, say here? Woe to oppressors. Woe to them that devise iniquity. There you go. Devise wickedness and work evil upon their beds. Right? 
when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. But yeah, but who gave them that power? They got that power from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Okay? They got that power from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And really through Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai is in charge now. Yahweh Shai made a statement, all power is given unto him. See? So how powerful is that, man? They get their power through the Heavenly Father. Okay? And there's another one where it says they do their wickedness in secret. All right? Uh, let's get back to Ephesians. So, again, this is what we're fighting against. Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. There you go. Against the wicked, against spiritual wickedness in high places. See? There you go. So, this, this is what we're fighting against. Psalm 17 and... Uh, Psalm 17 and 14. From men which are thy hand, O Lord. See? From men of the world which have their portion in this life. That's these top banking families. All right? You know, they got all the money. They got all the power. They're the left hand of the Lord. And whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes, right? It's called an inheritance. Case in point, the, the Rothschilds came on the scene when Mayam Shalbao changed his name to Mayam Shal Rothschild back in the mid-1700s. They came on the scene and they've, they've been in power ever since. All right? The Rothschilds, they have been in power ever since. The family that they work for, the Oppenheimers, they're still in power ever since. And I've seen Oppenheimer family trees that go back to the 1300s. Okay? So, that's who the scripture is talking about. All right. From men which are thy hand, O Lord. From men of the world which have their portion in this life. And they're the ones bringing forth this wickedness. When the Bible says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, they're the ones that's ruling in wickedness. These top banking families, the Oppenheimers, the Rothschilds. The, but they get their power from the Heavenly Father. But they have not given the credit to the Heavenly Father. You see? And that's one of the reasons why eventually they will be taken down. Okay, so pretty much that's it. Hopefully you were edified. And if you was, drop a line in the comment section. And as usual, it's on to the next video.